Let's make a circuit where you press a button to turn on an Arduino board. Once the button is pressed, the Arduino microcontroller is able to stay on and then turn itself off whenever it needs to. This circuit uses a push button and two types of MOSFETs, one N-channel MOSFET and one P-channel MOSFET. The MOSFETs I'm using are logic level, or pretty close to it, but you can certainly use other types of MOSFETs as long as your power supply and microcontroller can sufficiently use them as switches. You can also add diodes to the circuit to allow your microcontroller to detect when your push button is being pressed after it becomes powered on. I won't be trying that here, but here's a link on screen to another source that explains this in more detail. I'm not affiliated or sponsored with this link, but it's a pretty similar circuit to mine and it has a bit of extra info if you need it. And finally, you might ask, can you use a bipolar junction transistor, or a BJT, in place of one of the MOSFETs in the circuit? Technically, yes, you can. Here's me using a 2N3906 in place of the P-channel MOSFET. As you can see, the circuit successfully powers on and turns itself off after 5 seconds like it should. However, the circuit got so hot that I couldn't touch the BJT after about 5-10 to 10 seconds of it being powered on. I tried using different resistor values to try and fix this, and at one point the base or the paint from my base resistor burned off after only about 20 seconds of being powered on. So yes, the circuit does work with BJTs, especially more so if you have a better BJT selection than me, but if you haven't bought the parts yet or you're not sure of what you're doing, I would recommend using MOSFETs instead. Here's a schematic I made of the circuit. As you can see, it uses an N-channel MOSFET on the left, and a P-channel MOSFET on the right. You'll notice there's two different models listed for the P-MOSFET, that's because I tried using the circuit with two different kinds of P-MOSFETs, one of which was a surface mount MOSFET. I'll go through more detail on this in a later chapter in the video if you're interested. Anyways, let's go over how this circuit actually works. It starts with the switch and the Arduino being grounded, as well as the source of the P-channel MOSFET being connected to the positive battery terminal. When you press the button, the gate of the P-channel MOSFET has a pathway to the negative battery terminal. This creates a negative gate voltage compared to the positive source, and, in a P-channel MOSFET, this allows the source to flow with the drain. Now, the Arduino is receiving a positive charge and is successfully turned on. Great! Once the Arduino turns on, it runs its program, which emits a positive voltage on whatever digital pin you've programmed it to. In this case, it's digital pin 2. Now, the N-channel MOSFET's gate has become positive compared to its source. And in an N-channel MOSFET, this allows its source to flow with the drain. And there we go! The Arduino board is fully turned on and has the ability to turn itself off. All it has to do is stop releasing a voltage on digital pin 2. Whenever this happens, the gate side of the N MOSFET will no longer be held at a positive voltage from the Arduino. Now, MOSFET gates have the ability to store charge, much like a capacitor, and leave the source partially flowing to the drain. However, we have a 10k ohm gate to source resistor, which allows the positive charge in the gate to discharge to the negative power terminal. Because the gate is no longer positive compared to the source, the drain stops flowing to the source. This now causes the gate of the P-channel MOSFET to no longer be held at a negative voltage. Like the gate of the N-channel MOSFET, any static charge can go through a 10k ohm gate to source resistor. When this happens, the gate of our P-MOSFET will no longer be held at a negative voltage compared to its source, and now its source will stop flowing through its drain. Now the loop to our Arduino is broken and it will successfully turn off. And voila, we're back to our original starting condition where we can press the button and start the process all over again. Here's an example code on screen in case you want to test the circuit out for yourself. I'll see if I can put a copy and paste version in the description of this video as well. And here's a demonstration of our circuit actually working. You'll notice we're using digital pin 8 instead of pin 2, but it should work just as well. After 5 seconds, the circuit successfully powers off, and there we go. Notice that we have to press and hold the button for a second, so that the Arduino has time to run its program and keep itself on. And here's another demonstration of our circuit, but this time we're using our surface mounted P channel MOSFET as opposed to our original T0220 package. It's a pretty tiny MOSFET. It's located right in the middle of our other two MOSFETs with the right one not being connected to anything. Yes, I soldered some leads onto a surface mounted MOSFET, but it seems to be working just fine, except for one thing. You'll notice that if I shake the breadboard enough, Somehow, this is going to cause the Arduino Uno to power itself on. 
Which is strange considering that in this next video, I'll replace it with the original MOSFET and I won't be having this issue. I wasn't sure what the problem here was, so I decided to ask ChatGBT, and one of the solutions it proposed was to use a 1k ohm gate to source resistor instead of our 10k ohm resistor. So I unplugged the original MOSFET and then replaced the resistor, and just when I was plugging in the surface mounted MOSFET, one of the leads broke off, which was very annoying, and that just goes to show you that you have to be really careful when you're soldering leads to surface mounted MOSFETs, because apparently they can be very fragile, even if you're just plugging in, plugging out of breadboards. But I got to resoldering another one, and as you can see here, I just decided to plug it into the breadboard wherever, and then move the rest of the wires to accommodate it so I don't risk breaking another lead again. And as you can see here, shaking it with that 1k ohm gate to source resistor seems to have fixed the issue. And there you go, that's the end of the video. If you have any better ways of how you would accomplish this circuit, let us know in the comments because we're all just trying to make our Arduino circuits work at the end of the day and you might just be able to help someone out. For those of you who are having problems with the schematic and want to see an actual close-up of how our circuit looks, here you go. I guess I'll include the rest of the circuit in case you guys are interested. The breadboard on the right here shouldn't really matter, but in case you guys are curious, I guess I'll show some footage of that as well.